How you doing, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to our podcast. Uh, my name's Dana Brown from Masculine Investing. Uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, the beauty of land investing, why it's such a great business. Uh, when you think about it, what other business out there that you can start with almost no money in your pocket? I'm talking maybe a uh, couple of grand, three grand at the most. You can take a course that costs almost, almost nothing compared to a college degree. Uh, as soon as you complete the course, you're in the game. If you have the confidence, not afraid to fail, within a couple, three months, you're making money. Uh, you're buying and selling dirt, basically. Uh, it's, not, it's not buying houses. It's not going out borrowing hard money to get started. It's not getting into a business that uh, you need heavy insurance and, and have big carrying costs to operate. Uh, there's plenty of motivated people out there that want to sell land that are discouraged for so many reasons that don't want it anymore. Uh, there's more than enough people out there that love good deals on vacant land. Uh, they're not making any more land, for instance. Uh, the carrying cost are minimal. If you buy right and you're a shop investor, uh, your main carrying cost, if you hold the property decide to go long term, is basically just your, your annual property tax. Uh, if it's not in a gated community, you're typically not going to have any HOA fees. Most of the time, you ain't going to worry about the grass on vacant land. Uh, another great thing is if a hurricane comes, what's going to happen to your land? It's going to just clean it up a little bit. What happens if you're a, a bricks and mortar investor buying single family or multi units? What happens when a hurricane comes? And it's a big one. You got big issues. Um, with land, you haven't got to worry about tenants. Wrecking your property. You gotta. You haven't got to worry about depreciation on your property and damages just through weather and elements. Uh, things breaking, floods. Uh, there's no worries like that. I mean, land's the most wonderful thing in the world as far as I'm concerned, as far as a business. Uh, but the very little startup costs, like I said. Carrying costs are minimal. Plenty of people out there want to invest. I mean, plenty of people out there want to sell their property. Uh, it's competitive more than it's ever been uh, from when I started in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. There's many more people doing it. But if you look at Google Earth and just look at the United States, for instance, there's, there's a whole slew of land available. And what I, what I learned years ago in this land business is that a lot of times the areas that I've invested in, what I, what I refer to is the people that bought the property from me weren't end users. And that term that I use, what I'm referring to is Typically, who's buying the property from us as a land investor is people that are other investors. They're trying to see if there's any meat in the bone and uh, trying to time the market and buy it and resell it, make a little bit of money, and it, and it goes over and over again. I've mentioned in earlier lessons that there's been areas I've bought at uh, $1,500 and, and I saw them go up to around $15,000 in a short time and made a lot of money and then gone back in there and bought them at $500 a piece. I was actually in a community one time that uh, we were buying them between five and ten thousand uh, dollars. The prices were going up. We timed the, the, the market right, the phase of the real estate cycle we we're in, and uh, they went up to twenty and thirty. We we're selling these things for. We we're buying them in uh, low single digits and selling them in the high twenties and uh, low thirties. Actually, left that community. Thought we did everything we could there. Left and. Uh, Realized that the market hadn't stopped. They were still climbing. Went back in there and bought them in the 20s and 30s. Sold them in the 50s and 60s. And then recently I went back and started buying them at $5,000 again. So it's cyclical. This market goes in full circles many times. And very few communities that you're going to invest in are actually going to have somebody put a, put a building on it. So as, as I preach, as I've done this many times in these lessons, I'm always bringing up the fact that the four phases of the real estate cycle so important. If any lesson you learn that's most imperative is the four phases of a real estate cycle. And when I say that, when you know to bail, as I refer to in hold and fold, you fold when you know that market's coming to a peak and, and the buyers are disappearing. Uh, you got to get out. You don't want to be held holding all the cards. And then you time it right and get back in when it's coming back around after the recovery into the uh, expansion phase or early hyperinflation. You can score big time. So going back to this land business, I mean, it's just an ideal business. You don't need a college degree. And I'm willing to bet a smart, savvy uh, land, land investor with a, with a course or two under his belt, uh, the fortitude to not give up, 
to learn from his mistakes. These courses that are available nowadays, they're going to prevent you from making most of the mistakes. I know my course will. Uh, being a student of the business, never thinking you know everything in the world, always wanting to learn, always wanting to expand your knowledge. The investment is so minor compared to anything else out there on the market. I mean, you, you, some people say, well, you're better off investing in stocks and bonds. I beg to differ. It doesn't take much uh, to dispute that fact. I mean, if you know much about stocks and bonds, how are you ever going to know what a big company is really doing inside closed doors? You don't. So you're pretty much just investing in something and hoping that they're going to do the right thing. Hoping their board of members, or uh, the board of directors in that company has got the right vision. Because typically they don't really care about the investors as much as the, the, the inside people, basically. That's from what I've experienced. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can make your returns, you know, typically a good company. I mean, Madoff had everybody in the Sun investor under his belt. And his stock, and he was offering one point a month, I think it was 12% a year return. And that was almost too good to be true. The land investing business, 12%, you can make 100% and w without even being greedy. You can buy something at two all day long and sell it at four after all your costs. That's 100% return. That's easy. I'm talking buying something at 25% of the market value and selling it from five it's worth 20 buying it at five and selling if it's worth 20 selling it at 18 that's a phenomenal return that's less than 90 days typically I, I don't want to go into my experience i've talked about it in the past and some of the money i've made in a short time but if you learn this business and become a solid student and you want to learn you absorb the information it's not rocket science i've said that a million times it's simple enough i just i've tried a million businesses i tell my kids try everything you can so as you get older, you'll know what you don't want to do. And when I say that, I say that from experience. I've done, I bet I've had 30 different types of jobs in my life. Most of them I created myself. I've had car washes. I've sold night crawls. I've sold shiners. I've sold day-old newspapers. As a kid, I sold lemonade. Uh, had valet businesses when I first got to Florida. I've had a roofing company when I was a young guy with my dad. I even did it when I also in Florida for a bit when I was first down here in the first few years. Uh, worked and made dumpsters at a company up in New England when I was younger. I worked for some framing crews, did construction for many years. Had my own drywall repair business for about 10 years. I've tried a ton of different businesses. And when I ever discovered the vacant land business as an investor... There's nothing on earth that compares to it as far as the, the potential profits, the ease of running the business. And I'm talking about a business that doesn't have to be 100% automated. I'm talking about a business that I've run right up to this date that I do most of the work, but I keep my life simple. I don't like to make things complicated. I'm not a big computer guy. I tell you, between me and you, I'll take a computer, throw it in the damn lake. I get so damn frustrated. I mean, nothing, nothing worse than rely on something. All of a sudden, it just goes out on you, and I got all my eggs in one basket. I can't do crap. My, my system's not paperless because I'm a little older than most of you guys listening, and that kind of scares me. I like to have some paper that I can get my hands on and see what the numbers are, the phone numbers of the potential customers or the potential buyers. So the system I'm teaching is not going to be an automated system. I mean, the advanced course that I may produce later and structure later may go into a little more of the modern automation. But the course I'm teaching is simple, simple, simple. If you've got a pen and, pen and paper and you can get somebody to do an Excel sheet for you as you start to expand, that's about it. I mean, it's simple as pie. It's one, two, three. I call it the ABCs of land investing. I do not like to complicate things. So I I'm just reiterating the fact that land is a wonderful, wonderful business. I said to somebody one time, they're not making any more, and his answer was, yeah, they are. In Dubai, they're making land all the time. Well, I think he understood my point. I mean, it's very limited what they're making, and uh, they're having to take land to make land, basically, taking dirt and sand to make land. So basically, they're not making any more, and it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wide open market. I mean, I've had many people say, well, how long do you think it'll last? Can you do it? Is it, is it going to be too many people competing? Nobody's ever discussing going overseas investing. It's, it's, it's global. If you know this business, most countries in the world, it's, it's pretty similar. The, 
The basic structure of land investing is pretty much the same. One thing that will change is the laws and bylaws and certain restrictions in other countries, but once again, it's not rocket science to learn that. If you have any any sense in uh, head on your shoulders, it's all about asking the right questions. You get you get down to the city hall, the counties, or these areas, whatever they refer to them in other countries. If you travel abroad, the Philippines and Europe, if anywhere in the world, go in the Middle East, you can do this thing. You can do it from anywhere on a computer, basically. You can do it with a phone. It's all you need. I mean, a simple computer, you get more than one. I've done it where I've had more than one computer in case one broke down because I'm so afraid it's going to break down. But the system's simple. It's fail-proof. It really is. And, and, and it, takes, it takes the person to want to do it. It takes the courage to be able to want to not be afraid to fail a little bit and maybe hit some roadblocks or a couple hiccups. Because once you do, that should toughen you up a little bit. Say, okay, what do I got to do to figure this out? These people providing courses are going to take most of the questions out of it. I mean, there's so much information online nowadays. You can get so much information from YouTube and stuff that's available, audio books and e-books. And the only difference is that information is great, but typically you need somebody to guide you along so you 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 got structure a mentor or somebody just to get you through the you know get you through the path get you going once you've got it you've got it so basically that's what that's what my that's what my pros are about land investing compared to any other thing even compared to bricks and mortar which i refer to as basically houses much easier less overhead less people to get involved ain't gonna worry about contracts not showing up i haven't got to worry about people screwing up uh, two people in the way at the same time, can't get anything done, running out of time, got big carrying costs, borrowing hard money, borrowing the bank's money, bank taking your property away, tenants screwing up your place, the house burning down, a hurricane blowing it down. There's none of that. Some areas you got to be careful, might be some birds on the area, might be some tortoises. But if you do what I call your due diligence and you, and you build a team and have a good realtor in the area, they'll, they'll stand you, keep you, keep you away from those type of properties. So don't get greedy. Learn how to build a good team, and I'm going to teach you all the basics. It's real simple. I don't like to complicate things. So that, as you can tell, I get excited about it because I just think land's the best thing under the sun. So anyways, that's my, that's my lesson for the day. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to keep providing great stuff for you guys. Uh, my intention is to constantly make sure you guys understand this is simple. Try to build your confidence up a little bit because I want to see everybody maybe make a change, uh, actually get to that expected transformation in your life. Because so many people won't. And uh, I watch it every day with people, and I try to inspire, and it's very discouraging because people hear me, and then they go about their business, and I can't, I'm not trying to row anybody else's boat. I'm not trying to get in their lane. I'm not. Believe me when I tell you. But I just feel it's my duty that if I have something good to share, I want to share it. That's why I'm so passionate about this teaching, this course. Uh, it's something I've learned forever. I protected, held it close to my vest for a long time, and I think what happened was I decided to change. I just opened up the floodgates and said, not only am I going to teach it, I'm going to go through every I and every T and dot the I's and cross the T's and do everything under, uh, in my power to make sure I teach this thing correctly, keep it simple, don't make it confusing, be there to support the people. I just can't take it by the hand. So uh, think about this for a business, okay? And uh, once again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, talk to you guys soon. Uh, st uh, Subscribe if you'd like to. That way you hit the button or hit the bell, and that way you get notified every time we have a new video or audio. Uh, also, you can go online and listen to the podcast. So uh, thanks again, guys. Talk to you soon. Have a good week. Go out and inspire somebody. Don't be greedy. Try to be generous when you can. Thanks again. Later.